if you're watching this video then you're contemplating wanting to take the FE exam, wanting to take the PE exam. So just to give you a little background about myself, I took my FE exam the last semester of my junior year and I took the PE exam, at least back when I took it, it wasn't yet decoupled in my state from experience. So I took it four and a half years, almost exactly from when I graduated college. Getting it out the way, give you my background. Now here's my take on when are the best times to take the FE and PE exam. This is from uh, just personal experience, what I went through, talking to other people, what they went through, and this is kind of the consensus that I came up with, my own opinion. To start off with the FE exam, I advise that you want to take this exam while you're still in college if possible. The scholastic exam, the questions are based off of many classes that you've taken. As far as the timetable to actually take the exam, I advise pretty much the same time I took mine, the last semester of junior year, the first semester of senior year. That way it gives you, for one, if you pass it your last semester of junior year and you're still looking for an internship, it gives you a leg up. While you're not yet an EIT because you haven't graduated, you can still put on your resume that you've passed the FE exam. That'll give you a boost up against other candidates that are vying for your position. For whatever internship you're looking to gain during that last summer semester. Say you can't quite take it your last semester junior year. Senior year, I'll still take it then. That way when you come out of school, you're already ahead of some of your peers that are looking for jobs. If you put on your application, will be an EIT upon graduation. That gives you a boost up when talking to employers. At least they know that you're serious about pursuing this profession. You're taking the time and dedication to pass the AP exam somewhat early, so it makes you look good. Now, some of you may be asking, well, if I take it that early, you know, will I have enough of the scholastic experience from taking classes to actually pass the exam? My answer to that is, yes, you should, because by your last semester junior year, you may be missing a class or two at that time that would be applicable to the FE exam. For myself, I was missing thermo at the time, and I figured you gotta break it down mathematically. For those, you know, four or five questions that may be based on thermo, do I feel comfortable enough to teach myself and practice enough, practice problems, to be able to, you know, at least get 60 to 70% of those questions right? For me, I felt comfortable that I could do that. You should also feel comfortable that you can do that as well for whatever class that you may be missing. Usually by that time, your last semester junior year, you've taken the core classes. For me, structural, I had taken concrete, I had taken steel, at least steel one at that time. There was nothing missing major that I felt worried about. So to summarize it up, I advise FE exam, last semester junior year, last, last two semesters in your senior year, Get it out the way. Make sure that you have a leg up on your peers when looking for jobs. It shows employers, again, that you're serious about joining the profession and continuing your career in the engineering path. So I started to get rained on a little bit, but to continue the conversation, switching to the PE exam, I've had some interesting conversations with other engineers on this. And in my opinion, now that in most states, the PE exam is now decoupled from the experience requirement, meaning that you can take the PE exam before you gain four years of work experience. I believe the best time to take the exam is within a year or year and a half of taking the FE exam. Now hear me out, I've had some pushback on that from different people saying that, oh, well, maybe it's a little too soon. I don't have enough experience. You know, maybe I need some more experience working to work up to taking the PE exam. In my opinion, that is false. And I'll give you three reasons why they kind of intermingle um, as far as tying together. First reason why, P exam is purely scholastic in nature, meaning that you sit down with a review book, a review course, some practice problems, and you give yourself three to four months, you should be able to pass this exam if you have enough discipline, you go through and take the time to actually study properly, set up schedules, do what you need to do to pass. It's purely scholastic in nature, you can pass it, that's reason one. Reason two, which kind of ties into reason one and actually supports my claim that you don't need experience, is that if you look at NCES and these other state committees, now that they have decoupled the experience from the PE exam, 
what they're trying to tell you is that those two do not relate. There's experience, which you need to obtain your PE license, that's one. Then there's a PE exam that you need to pass to obtain your PE license, that's two. Two different things. So by decoupling the exam, they're trying to tell you that you have to look at those things differently. P exam, you can study for it, it's scholastic in nature. You pass it within a year or two after graduating college, you're good to go. Now all you have to do is wait to gain the experience to become a licensed PE. Let me stress this again. I gotta say it, the P exam is purely scholastic in nature. Sure, having some experience may help you answer a handful of questions, but that's nothing you can't study for and be prepared for. That's my little rant for that. Hopefully that sank in a little bit. And please comment down below if you have some opinions yourself on that. I'd love to hear uh, feedback on that. And for the third reason is that, you know, not everybody, but some people, you know, four or five years down the line after graduating from college or after taking the FE exam, people have gotten married, they're starting families, uh, they may be looking at switching jobs. Life happens. If you can get a P exam out the way early, get it out the way. It's best to be able to study and pass the exam while you're still in kind of college mode, study mode, and trying to bounce back after four or five years and study. People do it, it's a more efficient way to do it. And for me, I've taken the P exam a year to a year and a half after taking the FE exam. That's the most efficient way to take the exam in my opinion. Again, I'll break it down. Again, the P exam is scholastic. State committees and NCEES, they're all trying to tell you that you need to look at the experience and the exams as two different things. Now that they have decoupled the exams from the experience, two different things. Exam scholastic, experience is real world, experience that you need to gain to get your license. Boom, knock that out. And then the third reason is that to summarize, life happens, you never know what's gonna happen four or five years after you graduate, after you pass the FE exam. Kids, marriage, changing jobs, changing locations, it's better to get that stuff out the way while you're still in almost college mode, still busting away at those books. Whew, okay, it stopped reading. I can continue my walk. But that wraps it up. I hope this was an informative, one-way discussion. Hopefully it could be two-way. Please comment down below and tell me what you think about what I said, about when the best time to take the FE and P exams. I'd love to hear what you think. Comment down below as far as your experience as well. After taking the FE and P exam, if you've already taken it, when do you think is the best time to take the FEP exam? Uh, it's all good info to have. I love hearing from people. And again, as I say in most of my videos, I do these because I at one point had talked to somebody, had watched a video that helped me sort in my mind what I need to do and what I should do. And just hearing people talk about it and talking about it myself uh, with other people, it's all, I guess you could say therapeutic in a way for, for this uh, process we need to go through as engineers. So. I'm just trying to pay it forward and do my part for other engineers coming up behind me and maybe I can help them out in some way, shape or form. Either you all agree with me or you think I'm crazy uh, with these timelines. Either way, it's helpful, right? You all have a good day and I hope you end up passing those FE&P exams first time around, get it done. I'm out.